championship so close he can taste it. Time to go racing with the Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship. Christian Brooks in the 44 on the pole. 15-year-old Josh Pierce alongside him in the number 24. Nice, slow start. And we're underway. Green, green, green. And Brooks grabs the lead. Pearson slotting into second. But look at the move from the outside there for Spike Kohlbecker trying to run the outside line. Big draft already coming up into the corner. Pearson trying to go on the outside. You got to watch it coming through the opening corner. Brooks through cleanly. Further back, two, three, one. One driver uh, with some wing damage having to go off track. Otherwise, through one, two. And now turn number three. Solid job early here for the drivers. Michael to get through that first complex cleanly. Christian Brooks did a great job, but Josh Pearson tried to make that move on the outside to gain advantage into the entrance of turn number two, but Christian Brooks doing a great job shutting the door. They make their way down Holman Boulevard. Christian Brooks swings wide. This is the entrance down into turn number seven. Enough of a gap for Brooks to be able to run the racing line. The battle now is between the two Paps racing drivers. I think that even Sundar Murthy potentially able to get to the inside of Josh Pearson into turn number seven. Two of the primary passing opportunities, Greg, turn one, turn seven, Long straightaways here in Indianapolis. By the way, the driver that was involved in terms of uh, the wing damage was Prescott Campbell. So he is unfortunately the driver that's kind of riding shotgun on the field while the majority of the field is going into turn number 12. He is just going into turn number 10. So unfortunately, he was the one incident uh, where a rough start cost him perhaps an opportunity because he was riding uh, from row number six. Yeah, watching the start there to see what happened. Looks like potentially just got into the back of someone there, that right front of that wing, cutting, catching someone's left rear, and he had to take the escape road. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him come down pit lane early. Lots of time to be able to get that front wing changed. Otherwise, drivers coming across the line for the first time. It is the leader, uh, Christian Brooks. Josh Pearson able to hold off his teammate, Yuvin Sunder Murthy, for second. Thomas Nepvu in the fourth spot. Josh Green up to fifth. Spike Kohlbecker, sixth. Simon Sykes up from ninth to seventh. Kiko Porto, eighth. Nolan Siegel ninth, and Michael D. Orlando now into the top ten. Michael, I think D. Orlando got around Siegel. He was all over the rear wing of of Siegel going down into the turn. They went four wide down there, and I think it was D. Orlando who came out to victor. But a very good battle through turn number one. We you can't see it on the screen here, folks. Those of you watching on the Road to Indy TV app, but uh, Prescott Campbell, Campbell came into pit lane. That wasn't his wing. He's got somebody else's wing folded underneath his front wing. Oh, and the other, I would assume that'd be the other car that came in <laughs> right in front of him. That would be Miles Rowe. That's part of this Great Force Indy project. So those two cars already made their way into pit lane. And so by process of elimination, my guess would be that wing at one point in time belonged to Miles. It looked like Force Indy Red, Greg. I think you picked that up pretty good. And it's interesting because when you start mid-pack like that, that's when things start getting a bit crazy, right? The, the front guys took care of each other. We saw that happen. But mid-pack, everybody trying to dive to the inside, people coming across the bow from left to right. Turn one, obviously a precarious place. Danger leak, uh, lurks around the corner and, and for two drivers already out. Lap uh, two... About eight tenths of a second now, Michael. The lead for Christian Brooks over Josh Pearson. Sooner Murthy in third spot. Josh Green and Thomas Nepfu still running top five. Christy and Frazier battling down into turn number one. It looked like Christy got around Frazier. That was a nice move into the turn number one entry point, but they were battling down the front straightaway. And tough for Prescott Campbell, especially coming off with a victory in race number two of this 2021 campaign to have it go away so quickly into turn number one. It's just a tough break for him. It happens that quickly, uh, especially here in turn one at Indianapolis. You, you just try, all you're trying to do in your mid pack is just to try to get through cleanly. You want to have all four wheels on it. You want to have all the the body work on it. And Prescott able to get that done. He ended up picking up somebody else's wing, which is tough for him. But back out onto the racetrack for both those drivers. I'm sure that they'll get Rose's uh, front wing put back on unless there is damage to the suspension as well. But otherwise, uh, solid early lead here for Christian Brooks. The two Paps racing drivers, though, Josh Pearson. 
and you were in, you've been sooner or really not letting him get away at all. No, he's got about a .8 second lead, at least last time by did Christian Brooks. It looked really massive coming down that front straightaway, but the Paps drivers are able to close that gap. Pearson now about four car lengths off the rear wing of Christian Brooks, our leader. And what you start to look for now are gaps in the field. So you see that bit of a gap that Brooks has had since really the great start that he had from one to two. There's also a bit of a gap now forming between, say, spots three and four on the track. So Sunda Maruthi is in third. It's now over a second back to Green, who holds down that number four position. I'll tell you who's putting on a, a show right now, and that's Peter Vidanovich in the number nine for J. Howard Driver Development. Started back in 23rd, able to get through nicely. Now battling it out with Jace Denmark. He's in 14th position. A uh, nine-position improvement over the first three laps for Vidanovich, the very quick Kiwi driver who ran in the Toyota Racing Series last year down in New Zealand. A bit of a brake lock up there, Michael. It, 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 turn one is so tough. You're trying to roll so much corner speed through there, and you got to lay an apex at, to get the car to rotate because you got to get back to the right side of the track before you come to turn number two. It's such a tough corner, but the battle right now, Pearson closing up on Brooks. Boy, Josh Pearson really closed it down. It went from five car lengths down to three car lengths down to one car length. Josh Pearson behind Christian Brooks, your leader, and Yuvan Sundarmaruthi right there as well for third. Yeah, the draft plays a big role here at this track, and that's one of the things about Indianapolis. Just two of the longer straightaways we have all year long. Coming out of turn 14, all the way down the front chute, the draft is there. The only problem is once you get into the draft, you all start getting, getting the air wash because you don't have that air flowing over the front wing. Not a lot of, of aero downforce on these cars, but enough still, Greg, to give you that aero wash in the corner. And again, what you're looking for here is oftentimes when it's any sort of road course from this level all the way up to Formula One, you'll see four or five wide to start, but it doesn't go that way once the race runs out. Not the case here. There are so many cars so closely packed together that almost every time cars going to turn one, you see an opportunity for two, three, and four wide racing. Oh, we have a pass for the lead. Looks like Pearson got to the inside of Christian Brooks. Pass for the lead and a great battle further back between Kiko Porto, Simon Sykes, and Matt Round Garrido. Brooks back to the lead, wow. able to get back by potentially one of the over unders. You know, moved. The, when you make a hardcore move to the inside, the car is going to intrinsically go outside. A, a shallow entry means a wider exit. Well, an over under allows you to get to the inside again. That's the best place to be for turn number two, getting back to the inside so you can roll back on that throttle. All this racing up front, though, look at this, a battle for the Paps cars. Uh, that's bringing Josh Green into the fight. I said from the get-go, very happy with his race car yesterday. Potentially had he what he thought would have been a P2 qualifying spot, got held up with a driver going off track late in the session. Yellow flight came out, so he had to get off the throttle. Josh Green has now worked his way into P3. Green in the turn three motorsports car. He's by Sudra Murthy. Sudra Murthy's thinking about, hey, I'm going to grab the lead here. And then out of nowhere comes Josh Green. He'll be able to secure that third position. It's still Christian Brooks, about a three car length advantage over Pearson in second. They'll make their way through turn 14. The advantage for Brooks, two car lengths. But again, for that battle for third, Sudra Murthy on the rear wing of green. It's given a little bit of room here for Josh Pearson to focus forward and not have to worry uh, about his teammate behind him. But Josh Green will use that draft to close back up. You can see Brooks running the bottom of the racetrack again. Pearson trying the outside. Just going to have to give it up. Pearson, I think, dropped maybe the left rear and the grass just a little bit on the outside of the rumbles there. To make a pass on the outside, Michael, we've seen it happen here a lot. But, man, you got to be you got to be really decisive and take that corner. Yeah, we have some problems down into turn number one. Back as we uh, figure out who just went into the runoff, Sundar Maruthi just made a pass, or it looked like he was close to making a pass over Josh Green. Who is that? That is, uh, I believe, Bajoy Garg and Jackson Lee. Jackson followed him. You've got to go all the way around the outside to come through, and, the, and Bagar, uh, Garg just didn't quite know where to go. Here's Lee. He's going to get back around and get onto the racetrack. There is a runoff. If you cut off the racetrack, you can slide right through there, but it's not really well defined. Garg having some trouble getting through, and he's going to see himself fall well back. It almost goes into the oval turn four, and exactly. then you have a right-hander there, but your thought is, well, you have a gap, but there's barriers there that keep them from, from going into that gap, so it's easy to have those drivers miss that opportunity to rejoin. By the way, let's also point out that the two drivers we pointed out, we had the issue with Campbell as far as the start and claim the wing of row. Those two young men are back out and running on the race course. They are a lap down, so currently they are in 25th and 26th position. Biggest mover so far, Grant uh, Palmer in the exclusive Autosport machine started all the way back in 25th. He's now into the top 15. We got a potential shot here for a position for the lead. lead. Yeah, coming down into turn number one. You see the back markers there waiting for those guys to come into position. 
No pass as of this point here. And again, Christian Brooks. No. Yep. Uh, that's no. That's, that's a, further that back. a lap car. I think it's a lap. That's a little further back. We'll pick up the action here on the racetrack here. Christian Brooks led across the line. Here is Brooks still as your leader. Looks to me like Sooner Murthy able to get back by Josh Green as well. That happened in turn number one on last time by. It was a pass that Green was on the inside and Sooner Murthy went on the outside. We talk about those outside passes. He was able to make it stick and had the advantage into turn number three. It worked. You can make the pass on the outside of one if the driver is defending on the inside because if you're on the inside, you have to break earlier and break a little bit harder to be able to get make that corner. Otherwise, you're going to go off. Again, shallow entry means a wider exit. If you're on the outside, you can carry that speed around the outside and potentially get the spot because really out of turn one it's the race to the apex of turn two whoever can get to the apex of two or, or really the end the exit point of one is going to get that position is is christian brooks in control obviously he has the lead is josh pearson setting him up this has been a great battle up front for the lead this entire event so far well, I think it's early early on, and if Josh Pearson's learned ever, anything over the first year of, of, of running in the series, it's to be patient. You're up front. You don't need to go to the lead right now. Uh, just hold on. they got lots of tires. These tires are going to be fine throughout this thing. It's not like the tires are going to go away at the end of the race. The key for him is just to stay there and be patient. Let yourself pull away. Let everything else sort it out behind you. Let Josh Green battle it out with Sundar Murthy. The idea would be a two-driver breakaway. If Pearson goes by, Brooks, he's not quite as quick. He could potentially allow everybody else to come back in. You have to be smart when you're, uh, when you're picking your, uh, your passing opportunities as well. A shot back to the lead. You saw Christian Brooks barely a car length ahead of the machine of Pearson. So they make their way down Holman Boulevard. Pearson there. You see Christian Brooks take to the inside. It's Josh Pearson on the outside. Brooks slowly breaking his way through. That's a great battle through turn seven. Yeah, they're stacking up behind Brooks right now. I'm not sure that uh, the car Christian Brooks is exactly perfect here. I kind of expected him, based on the pace he had in qualifying, to be able to stretch away by himself. But I think that Pearson, using the draft, uh, completely and fully here, both down the front straightaway and all the way down home on Boulevard to turn number seven. Greg, he is biding his time sitting right there, but it almost seems to me like he's going to want to go by soon because you've been sooner and right behind him. That was my next question to you. All right, we have hit the halfway point of this race. It is 15 laps. At what time do you shoot your shot? When do you need to get in front uh, if you're the car that's currently uh, trailing a number two and trying to use that draft as best you can? I really, Greg, think it's all about what's happening behind you. I think that uh, there's a potential... Uh, for a pass right now as they work their way down the straightaway. I think Pearson's realizing he does not want to battle with his teammate. They'll come all the way down into turn number one. We'll get the shot here. It's still the inside. No, both Paps drivers have gone by. One's gone too deep. Suda Maruthi's and gone. So, what, what there, so there's the right run through the the, the runoff there. So either Sooner Maruthi or, or uh, Pearson went off. One driver from Paps has gone to the lead. Brooks holds on to second. And I think that Josh Green went off into the grass. Green went off to the grass on the outside of the racetrack and came back on. Here's some race, some aggressive racing further back as well for 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. But we do definitely have a new leader. We'll see is it whether the 24 of Sundar Murthy or the 22 of Pearson. Hard to pick it up right there. Driver a little wide on the exit of that corner, blocking down to the bottom, running the defensive line. Christian Brooks has got a battle on his hands now as we're into the second half of this opening USF 2000 race. Great action. And the exactly what we come to expect here on the road course at IMS. I think what had happened was Juven Sunamaruthi went to the outside as Pearson went to the inside. They split Brooks, and Brooks was stuck as the meat in the sandwich, and then Sunamaruthi missed the turn altogether. He had to go into the runoff, but that was some great battle because Green was right there as well. Looking at the leaders coming back through here, I think Christian Brooks potentially back to the lead. Indeed, Brooks back to P1. I, I have a feeling that, that uh, Spike Kohlbecker and Michael D'Orlando are now fourth and fifth. D'Orlando started 12th. He's up into the fifth spot. Oh, no, he's uh, fourth. Yep, he's fourth. What a run for D'Orlando. It was not Sunda Maruthi. It was another car that went into the runoff that made one of the charges there. Matt Round Garrido, perhaps. Yes, indeed, it was. Round Garrido was the driver who went wide. There was a battle there, like the top six drivers. Now, Matt Round Garrido will drop down to the 22nd position, and he's yeah. on pit lane. I think based on the, the camera shot we had, we thought it was the lead group, and it wasn't actually the lead yes. group. It was a little bit further back. So, Correct. indeed, Matt Round Garrido has dropped back down, and he's gone into pit lane here as well. Uh, and the issue, as we said before, for Bajoy Garg and, and Jackson Lee, a lot of drivers having trouble in turn one because you're pushing so hard in that corner to try to roll through. Look at this fight further back, though, Michael. Brooks still leads. Pearson runs second, and I think that's potentially D. Orlando by Sunder Amurthy. 
Wow, Michael D'Orlando started 12th. Greg, he's up to P3. Yeah, and all of that interaction between the top six as that group has continued to narrow as the race has gone along. Right now, the loser, unfortunately, of that group from a couple of laps ago was Green. He was solidly running in fourth. He has now dropped back to sixth position. Indeed, Christian Brooks still holding the top spot, but he has been under fire over the last five laps aggressively from Josh Pearson as they'll come through turn 13. Turn 13, you got to get to the right side of the racetrack. You've got to late apex that because the first guy on the throttle is the guy that's going to get the good run through 14. They're flat out all the way through 14, all the way down the straightaway again. Pearson, Josh Pearson, just 15 years of age, holding back. It's now Sooner and Murthy to second. You've been Sooner and Murthy now, the driver in the second spot. Winner of the opening round at Barber Motorsports Park. He's side by side with Brooks. Book it. Sooner and Murthy through to take the lead in turn number one. What a great pass. Goes around the outside, out broke Christian Brooks into turn number one. Juven Sunamaruthi, the winner of round number one of the 2021 campaign, now takes the lead of the USF 2000 Grand Prix of Indianapolis. We just have five laps remaining. Now let's see what Christian Brooks can do. Now he gets the advantage of the draft for the first time. Will he be able to draft back up and make an opportunity to get by again? Ten laps in the books, five laps to go. Brooks trying to get the draft on Sundar Amurthy, who has been strong this year, third year in the series, and staying again with Pabst Racing. A strong, strong operation led by Augie Pabst. Tony Kasimitz, part of the engineering team there. Uh, they won the team championship a number of years ago. These guys uh, are a top-notch team, and Juven really starting to dial in with them. They had Hunter McElroy a couple of years ago, as we know. Hunter, of course, uh, battling for the championship with uh, Braden Eves and, and USF 2000 that year. You've been now leading by a decent margin. It looks like two car lengths, Michael. Michael D. Orlando, but the, the drive of the race thus far, he's made his way into that third position, but Josh Pearson right there in fourth would like to get that back. The field makes their way out of turn 14, and Juven Sundamaruthi has gapped by about five car lengths. The battle will now be for second place. It's Christian Brooks and Michael D. Orlando. Yeah, no doubt about it. Sooner Murley's car came alive midway through, and he is pulling away now from Brooks, who, as Michael said, is now having to battle with Michael D. Orlando and Josh Pearson. Green holding on to P5, Colbecker in sixth, Porto seventh, Nepfu eighth, Christie ninth, and Jace Denmark in the tenth spot. Greg, you've been sooner Murthy doing a great job out front. And this is basically the largest lead we have seen since, say, the first couple of laps where Brooks had that to like seven tenths, eight tenths of a second. You talk about the amount of draft that you get, the advantage you have being in second or third going on to turn number one. Just how close does Brooks need to be to soon Maruthi to take advantage of that heading into turn one? A great thing about this racetrack, if you're able to get through 13 well and you're on the throttle because you're full throttle all the way through 14, four car lengths is going to be enough and you're going to be able to get that draft come up the straightaway. But you have to nail it, maybe be a little better coming out of 13. The gap now up to maybe five, six car lengths, soon Maruthi pulling away. And I think this kind of plays, you look at what we talked about, Michael, at the very start of the, the race here. IndyCar went out for their first practice session. The track going to be drastically different. This is when it plays into the engineers. What changes did they make? Because you're going to go off off the way the balance was on the race car. It's going to change. You almost have to guess it, educate a guess on what you're going to do with the race car. And it has gotten warmer as well. So that plays into this factor as well. Three to go this time by. And that lead about five car lengths again for you, Ben Sunamaruthi, Brooks, D. Orlando, Pearson, Green. They are your top five as the field makes their way into turn number one. Christian Brooks, leader by a, a significant margin with, with uh, four top fives and those two wins at St. Petersburg on his record for the season. He has the ability now to, to say, you know what, I'll take second here. The, the, the key to a champion is you take the best out of the car you have, but nothing more. You don't want to throw it away here. A DNF is what hurts championships. If he's able to finish second or third here, take it make the adjustments to the race car, and be better for the second race this afternoon. And you said it. He's got D Orlando all over his rear wing. Do you do you battle for that position? Or if you don't feel you have the car, you, you have to let him go, thinking big picture as opposed to one race at a time. But a great lead for Juven Sunder Maruthi. Again, Christian Brooks and Michael D Orlando. That is the battle for second place. The field makes their way through turn number 10. And you never know. Christian Brooks may be cool on the lap here to try to, to, to bring the temperature down a bit in those Cooper tires for that last lap, last two lap charge we know the laps are winding down i believe it'll be two to go uh this time by so again six tenths of a second was the lead for suitor murthy it's again what do we say greg four maybe five car lengths right now uh and we'll see what happens whether or not uh, brooks can use that draft and the one thing brooks still does have is that draft to be able to keep him away from d orlando he still has the benefit of having having the extra arrow 
Well, soon to Maruvi, he will maintain that five car length advantage, make it six. Again, that battle for that second position. It's Christian Brooks and Michael D'Orlando, the field making their way through turn number one, and D'Orlando not able to close up on the rear wing of Christian Brooks, but right there is Josh Pearson as well. He's not ready to give up the fight. And I think that may be what's helping Brooks a little bit is that D'Orlando, you know, D'Orlando's saying, hey, I started 12th. I'm, I'm running P3. If I'm on the podium, this is a major win for me. I'm going to hold on to this spot. Even though he wants the race win, thinking about the championship, you want to be able to move up from P12. By the way, last time by for Sundar Amuthi, that, uh, that, that lead extended to seven-tenths of a second, so he gained time on lap number 13. Great battle for third. That is Josh Pearson trying to look to the outside of Michael D'Orlando. The battle now making its way through turn number eight, but Josh Pearson trying to get himself on the podium. Couple of wins already on the season, as we said, for Christian Brooks. One win for Prescott Campbell, one for Yuvin Sooner Murthy. Yuvin trying to grab his second win, having broken the the big goose egg uh, for his first two years in the series, had a really strong run at Barber Motorsports Park. This is even better than that. To be able to run where he did, did get past his teammate, and then make the move by the leader. This is the best race I've seen Yuvin Sooner Murthy run in his road to Indy career. White flag, I believe, will fly next time by. The field making their way down the front straightaway. Yuvan Sunda the Maruthi will bring the field down. It's Christian Brooks in second, then Michael D'Orlando third, but Josh Pearson not ready to get up the fight. Pearson all over the rear wing of D'Orlando into turn one. D'Orlando not in a position to try to get by Christian Brooks. Thinks about the outside of the corner. They're actually potentially side by side through turn number two. Deep move to the inside of turn number two. And does he get through or not? He does not. Here comes Pearson now to the inside as well through turn number four. It was an outside move for D'Orlando. Here come they through the switchback. And it's still Brooks holding the spot. This is going to allow Sooner Murthy to pull away unchallenged. The fight now, Michael, for P2. Christian Brooks trying to hold off a charging Micro D'Orlando, and D'Orlando swings way wide into turn number seven. D'Orlando trying to get around Brooks. He does. Great pass around the outside. Christian Brooks went on the defensive to try to hold off Josh Pearson. D'Orlando from 12th up to second. Brooks still holding on to P3, trying to uh, shut down the damages right now. Third spot still would be strong for Christian Brooks, but when you have that victory in your sights, it's sad when you fall to second, to third, rather. But let's put the spotlight now on Yuvin Sundar Amurthy. What a great run. Started third inside of row number two. Able to get to the lead. He'll work his way out of turn number 14. Second win of his career here in USF 2000. A victory for Pabst Racing. On to the front straightaway. Double checkers for Yuvin Sundar Amurthy. Winning round one of a triple header on the road course here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The... The Pats crew pumped up there. <laughs> D. Orlando from 12th up into second. Christian Brooks started on pole. He ends up P3. That is his fifth straight top five and third uh, podium in a row. He will not be happy with that one, though. Josh Pearson, who started on the outside of the front row, ends up in the fourth spot. Josh Green in fifth. Spike Kolbecker in sixth as the celebrations continue with the Pabst racing crew on pit lane. Kiko Porto, seventh. Dylan Christie, Thomas uh, Nepfu, and Jace Denmark rounding out the top 10. Good run for Grant Palmer as well. 25th up into 14th for Grant Palmer. These drivers put on a heck of a show for the first rung on this road to Indy ladder. That was a lot of fun with Sunda Maruthi gaining his second career USF 2000 victory. D. Orlando with a fantastic wow. run. And then Christian Brooks. Able, I know, be disappointed, but able to hold Josh Pearson off at the end. That was great. couple of stats I'll throw at you. You talk about the great show. How about 164 passes during the course of a 16-lap race? That's pretty impressive. It helps when you have 26 cars there in the field. And not that Yuvin needs any more motivation to say, hey, today was a great day. I just want to race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. However, he was fifth in points. And while he's not going to catch Christian Brooks with this effort, especially with Brooks finishing third, he will do some significant damage in terms of trying to catch guys like Porto, Campbell, and Lester Degree Pearson. So today on many levels, a great day for Yuvin Sunamaruthi. Well, when we're talking about the, uh, the championship as well and the scholarship, right, to be able to go to Indy Pro 2000, and all you really want to do is beat the point leader. If you're beating the point leader, it's a successful race. And Yuvin Sooner Murthy, his second win, tremendous job for him. And again, Michael D. Orlando up from 12th to 2nd, Brooks in 3rd. 
all in all, a tremendous race. And one of the calling cards we have on the road to India, what we love to see is green to checker racing. These kids need race laps. We don't like to see yellows, full course cautions. So these drivers going green to checker, man, that's exactly what we want to see. And hopefully that trend will continue for the remaining seven races. A fantastic job by all in this field. A great start to our month of May, the first race of the weekend, the USF 2000 Grand Prix of Indianapolis. Congratulations to Yuven Sundamaruthi, his second career USF 2000 victory, first here at the world's greatest race course, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. There is a very happy young driver getting out of that Pabst racing machine. In fact, that is team owner Augie Paps, first one to come and greet Yuvin up on top of the car. And you can see the elation there, the big W for Wisconsin. He's a Badger. He goes to University of Wisconsin. And uh, you know what? It's been interesting, Michael. And you've called, and I've called so many races over the last 10 years. And amazing, we're going to have, we're going to celebrate the 400th ever USF 2000 race uh, on, uh, on Saturday afternoon. But you see these kids develop as they do, especially you've been three years in the series. You've watched him mature from a 16-year-old to this mature 18-year-old that can win races now.